Hello, my name is Jens Albrecht and I am one of the authors of O'Reilly's book Blueprints for Text Analysis. In this video, I want you to show how to use Giphy to create a co-occurrence graph for named entities as described in Chapter 12, Building in a Large Graph. You can find a link to the GitHub repository of the book also in the comments section. The files used in this video can be found in the folder for Chapter 12. First, let's have a look at the graph we want to produce. The nodes or vertices represent the named entities that were detected in our corpus. We restricted the analysis to entities of type organization. Whenever two entities are mentioned in the same article, in other words, whenever they co-occur, we create an edge between them. The number of co-occurrences is used to shape the width of the edges. The analysis in the book chapter is based on articles from the Reuters News Corpus about mergers and acquisitions of companies. Here's an example with some named entities that have been identified by Spacey's named entity recognizer. This article in particular would result in these co-occurrences. Each combination of two named entities generates a tuple that represents an edge in the graph. For example, the entities in the first sentence U.S. Department of Transportation and Transworld Airline generate one tuple. In fact, we generate all combinations of named entities appearing in an article. You could also limit the scope of co-occurrences to paragraphs or single sentences to produce less edges. In the book, we demonstrate how to generate a pandas data frame for all combinations of named entities per article. This is basically already the list of vertices for the graph. You can easily transform such a data frame into a network X graph and export it in the graph in the graph exchange XML format GEXF. X is great for working with graphs, but its visualization features are rather rudimentary. That's why we now switch to Gephi. You can directly open a GEXF file with Gephi. Just double click it in the explorer or open Gephi and import it into a new workspace. We already did that. At first the graph does not look nice. But Gephi is a powerful tool, not only for visualization, but for complete graph analysis. First turn on the node labels in the toolbar at the bottom. You can modify the size of the labels and edges here with the sliders. Doesn't look very nice at the moment, but that doesn't matter. You can zoom in and zoom out by scrolling the mouse wheel, and you can also move the graph around by pushing and holding the right mouse button. Turn off the node labels again for a moment. We first want to adjust the layout of the nodes. In the layout section at the left part of the window, choose the force atlas layout and set the repulsion strength that's dragging the nodes part to 50,000. We also set the gravity to 2,000. Press run to start the algorithm. And after a few seconds, you can stop it and our graph got, got sorted out a little. As we can see, we have a number of small disconnected subgraphs here and a larger component, a larger connected subgraph at the lower part of this image. We want to concentrate on this largest connected subgraph only. To do this, we run the com connected components algorithm in the statistics session, section at the right. So press statistics and start the connected components algorithm by clicking on the run button here. Leave the defaults and in the report we get the information that we have 24 weekly connected subgraphs and as you can see we have 13 connected subgraphs with consisting only of two nodes in the distribution chart and in the lower right part we have uh, one connected subgraph with over 17 nodes. This is the subgraph we will use for our analysis. To do so, we apply a filter. So click on the filter section, choose topology, and then giant component. It's a pretty fine filter. 
hit filter in the lower right part of the window and now we have selected only this subgraph and just removed the other nodes from the view. To simplify the graph further, we will remove all nodes with a degree of 1. So there's a number of nodes with just one incoming edge. Let's just remove those nodes from the analysis as well. We Choose the degree range filter from the topology section and add this as a subfilter to the giant component. So that's an additional filter here. Click on the degree range and let it start with a value of 2. Now we have a quite or a rather simple subgraph and we will adjust the layout again. Choose the Fruchtermann Rheingold layout. This places or arranges the nodes in this nice circular layout. You can stop it after a few seconds. And now we can turn on the node labels again and adjust the size if we want to. So but it's, uh, it's okay. Some of the node labels are overlapping and we can prevent this by choosing the label adjust algorithm in the layout section, which just make sure that the node labels are not overlapping. Just uh, run it, and now the graph looks pretty nicely already. We could also fine-tune the layout by manually moving the nodes. We did this for the book. What just we skip that step here. As we can already detect visually, there's a number of subcommunities in the graph, closely connected subgraphs here. The modularity is a measure of a structure of the graph that can be used to identify such communities. Let's start the uh, modularity computation from the statistics menu again. Here you find a modularity algorithm. Hit run again. Press OK. And now we have the modularity as an additional attribute to each node of the graph. We can use this now to colorize the graph. In the appearance section, in the upper left part of the window, choose nodes, partitioning, and then as an attribute, modularity class. Make sure you have this paint icon here selected, the color, and hit apply. And now all our nodes and edges are colorized with the modularity. This identifies or this highlights the communities. Now we can also adjust the size of the nodes proportionally to the degree. Nodes with many edges will become larger by, by this step. We choose the size icon here for the nodes. Choose ranking. As an attribute, choose the degree. Leave defaults uh, of a minimum size of 10 and a maximum size of 50 and hit the apply button. So the graph looks quite okay now. But so far we have been working only in the overview section. Let's go to the preview section where we can fine tune the design. Hit refresh here, and now the graph looks like this. So it's a nice visualization that we get here. We uh, change some of the defaults. We want to show the labels, set the font size to a value of uh, maybe 24 or 18, something like this. Uh, choose the border width of zero. This is an adjustment that I would like to make. I also like uh, the edge is a little transparent, so we set this opacity of the edges to a value of 60. And hit refresh. Ah, I forgot one button. That's the button for the, uh, for the node labels with the proportional size, which makes the size proportional to the size of the nodes. We don't want to have this here, so remove this uh, setting. And now our graph looks like this. 
we can choose a larger font size. Hit refresh again, nothing happens in Gephi unless you hit some button. That's some kind of, some, sometimes a uh, little annoying, but uh, you really get nice visualizations with, uh, with this tool. So that's it for the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to know more about text analytics and natural language processing, check out our book uh, at O'Reilly or uh, give a thumbs up to this video and have a look at the GitHub repository.